Okay, hello everyone. We're gonna talk about ad chatbots and how to make them even smarter with ML.net. Um, I have just a couple of slides and then we'll move to the demo and then I'll show you how you can create a simple bot with your custom ML.net model in just 10 minutes. So here I have a quick slide just about me. Um, my name is Veronika Kolesnikova. I'm a Microsoft MVP in AI. Uh, I am a developer at Brightpoint in uh, Boston. Mostly I'm working with Microsoft technologies like c .NET, Xamarin, and obviously I'm working with um, .NET-based CMSs like EpiServer and Sitecore. And here are my hobbies and feel free to contact me online and ask me any questions there later if you want to. So let's move to the session. And what is a bot? So in general, bot is a um, software application that can understand what a user wants, whether a user enters his or her questions by just typing them, or he or she just ask those questions using voice commands. And that bot can understand those questions and provide answers or perform some actions based on the request. Um, here I have a big question. Is bot the same as virtual assistant? I am uh, having lots of arguments with people about it. There's lots of people, they have different opinions. I think that bot is pretty much the same as virtual assistant skill. And let me explain to you why I'm thinking that way. So in, um, for example, if you're using Microsoft technologies, you are first creating just a bot, and then you have an option to connect it to different channels. Uh, one of the channels is Cortana, and Cortana is a virtual assistant. So by creating a bot and enabling a connection to Cortana, you are creating virtual assistant skill. And I believe that, um, the base of every virtual assistant skill is a bot. Um, you are creating bot first, and then um, even if you use in Microsoft technologies, you can uh, create virtual assistant skills using uh, bot uh, by um, adding libraries that can connect to Alexa and Google Assistant. So all kinds of virtual assistant skills you can create starting with a bot. And Microsoft offers um, several options how you can create a bot. First of all is a bot framework SDK. So you can start it right from your Visual Studio, start it from, from scratch, create a bot framework um, solution and pro or a project if it's part of a bigger solution. Um, then you'll get a um, sample bot right there, or you can create it just clean and start from scratch. You can host it, your bot anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be Azure. It can be on premises. It can be on um, other cloud providers, or you can host it on Azure using bot framework. Or you can start with Azure. And on Azure, you have Azure Web App Bot. Um, so you are creating a bot um, on, on Azure as a resource. Then you can download the code and you will get pretty much the same template as you can get using Bot Framework. So there are two options on Azure when you create a bot. Um, you can create a bot connected to Louis, so it will already have some, um, some machine learning base, or you can create just a simple echo bot there. And I'm going to switch to portal later and show how you can do that. Another uh, tool on Azure is um, Azure Bot Channels Registration. So once you create your bot and it doesn't have if it was through um, the bot framework, if you started with your Visual Studio, or you started with Azure 
and created an Azure Web App Bot. You can register that bot uh, in different channels, meaning connect it to different channels. So, for example, you can connect it to Cortana or Twilio or Teams or Skype. There are so many options in different channels. You can um, go uh, to Azure Portal and see how many channels you can connect to. And there are a lot of them. And next one that is uh, relatively new, I saw it only maybe a couple of months ago. I, I think it was still on preview. I think it's out of preview right now. But uh, someone told me it's been a couple of years since the Microsoft Healthcare bot was released. Um, you can um, definitely check out check it um, on Azure, in Azure portal. There are lots of documentation about it, but basically the healthcare bot is um, kind of pre-trained for um, healthcare specific um, data and interactions. So it has some already, uh, so the, the machine learning part of the healthcare bot is um, pre-trained on some kind of healthcare related questions, but you have an option to customize it. Um, it depends on um, who are you building it for, whether it's a medical school or it's a hospital uh, or it's um, some kind of other health uh, care provider that you are building the bot for. Um, it's really a good start uh, for all kinds of healthcare bot solutions. And in the core of every bot, we have machine learning. I already mentioned it a couple of times, but it's really important. I can't even imagine a bot that, <clears throat> that can work completely without uh, machine learning underneath. Um, unless you know that your users have three specific questions that they're going to ask that specific bot, and it needs to provide three specific answers but I don't think it's a valid use case for a bot. So there are definitely uh, lots of different options how you can integrate machine learning with your bot. And one of them is ML.NET. Um, ML.NET was mentioned already several times uh, throughout the um, conference, the .NET Conf. Uh, Bree was talking about it during the keynote and then Cesar was talking about it during his session. He provided lots of insights and um, he told a lot of information about uh, new features of ML.NET. But in general, ML.NET allows you to train, build, and ship custom machine learning models using C Sharp or F Sharp. And there are lots of different scenarios available. You can use it for sentiment analysis, uh, object detection, price prediction and um, other scenarios. Um, it also can be connected to TensorFlow and Onyx. Uh, great tool is AutoML. You can uh, use it through uh, command line. You can use it through API. Or there is a model builder um, that is really awesome and um, really useful. Uh, if you don't have much experience, or maybe um, you just don't want to dig, dig deeper into machine learning, trying to figure out what kind of model you need to build, uh, what kind of data you need to collect, um, then um, the model builder is the best tool for you. And I'm going to show it in my demo. Uh, ML.NET is open source. So here I have a link um, to um, the GitHub repo that you can check. There are lots of different samples there. Um, so you can use it in all kinds of applications. It's uh, really simple. And now let's move to the demo. And I am going to show you the Azure portal. I wanted to show you that documentation. Um, I think it's also interesting, but I think you can find it online yourself. So how to build a bot? You are logging into your Azure portal. And again, I want to remind you that you can always start with um, the bot framework uh, and start uh, 
from scratch uh, in your Visual Studio. I'm going to show you how you can start on Azure. So you're basically searching for a bot and you are selecting Web App Bot. It's a new resource here. You can create it. Um, you are filling in the form and it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you are not new to Azure, you know, you know that it's really easy. Just a couple of fields um, that you need to fill in. Um, the thing that you need to remember for um, if you want to um, if you want to follow my demo or if you want to try it on yourself after my session. So the bot template I'm using it's going to be just simple echo bot. Basic bot here, it's already connected to some kind of machine learning and um, it is actually part of cognitive services. It's a uh, Lewis or language understanding intelligence service. And I'm not saying you can't use uh, several machine learning solutions in your bot. In fact, for uh, one of my recent projects, we used several tools for machine learning and they complement each other really well and um, it's uh, it's a great experience. So, but for this demo, I'm gonna use just the Echo Bot, and um, I'm not gonna create re the resource right now because it might take some time. I already have my resources created, um, and we have the Web App Bot. So let's check it here. So here we have an overview. That's um, some basic information, lots of documentation in the resources part. Uh, but when you go to the build section, uh, you have an option to download bot source code. And when you download it, uh, you are getting that uh, basic echo bot that you can create um, through using bot framework right, uh, in Visual Studio. And Acabot, uh, it doesn't have any machine learning attached to it because it is just repeating whatever a user types in. And when we download it, I already have it downloaded just to save the time because I know we, are, um, we don't have a lot of time today. So that's the clean Acabot that I downloaded right from uh, my Azure portal. There are lots of files here. Um, and so you can see that the activity here is just getting the whatever text um, the user types in and just echoing it back. Uh, we can add um, using the model builder. So I already installed model builder, but if you don't have it um, in your Visual Studio, um, there are lots of documentation how to get it. Basically, you're going to um, the marketplace or you are managing your extensions right from your Visual Studio and you are getting ML.NET model builder. It's still on preview, uh, but I think it's working uh, great. So when you have that extension, you go here and you add in machine learning. And here you have some options, um, what kind of scenario you want to build. Um, they have, again, they have really great documentation that explains every scenario. But here you can see a couple of lines um, explaining what's going on. I'm going to select the sentiment analysis. I'm going to build just um, the basic um, example here. So I'm selecting this one. Input can be a file or a SQL server. I am choosing a file. So um, there's some restrictions there. Um, you can either use CSV files or CSV files. Uh, open. And then column to predict. So here we have two columns. And my data set is really simple. It has um, the sentiment and sentiment text. So it's basically some data from Wikipedia, how uh, people were commenting, and it's rated if it's um, toxic um, information or non-toxic. So the column to predict is um, sentiment here. And it's really important to remember that data is 
um, really important. You need to make sure that your data is clean, that um, you have valid information there. Because um, when you are creating your uh, machine learning model, and it doesn't matter if you're building it with ML.NET or any other tools, um, it's really important that um, the data is clean, it's up to date, um, and you have valid information there. Otherwise, your uh, machine learning model will be trained on um, maybe biased data or um, incorrect data, and then um, it won't provide correct results to you later. So here, um, I selected this um, column, and a sentiment, and then you click on train. Um, here you can choose time to train. Uh, it might be 10 seconds. Um, so we can start training. And here we're seeing uh, the best accuracy with, that we're getting, uh, the best algorithms, and then the least um, effective algorithm. It's really awesome that model builder can actually select a model type perfect for your data. And you don't need to do anything. You don't need to know much about um, types of the models. Then you can evaluate it. It provides you some statistical information here. Um, and then we click on code and we add in projects and it's gonna add two projects um, to your um, solution. I am gonna switch here where, where I already added those projects. So there will be two projects. One is the model itself, and it is this one. Um, so the model is going to be a malmodel.zip, and then some um, helpers here um, for you to develop. Um, and also there will be a console app for you to test. Um, I have, um, I copied actually pretty much everything from um, that uh, console application here. So um, here I am loading the model and then I'm passing the text that user enters and then uh, passing it to the model. And then based on the text, model engine can predict if it's toxic or non-toxic. So that is a pretty basic example, but if you are combining it with um, Lewis, or maybe you're extending the model, then you can do lots of different things with your custom data. And um, it will be specific for your clients or for your business. And then maybe if you combine it with um, language understanding, then you can check if it's, for example, toxic sentiment, then you are just stop processing it. And if it's non-toxic, um, then you're just uh, passing it to Lewis, and then Lewis is going to analyze um, your uh, user's question and then provide um, an answer. Okay, and there are two ways to um, test it. So there is one way is a bot framework emulator. You can just test it on your local machine. Um, you can add, um, so that is by default, uh, that local host with that port. You are adding API messages. And then um, if your uh, bot was created on Azure first, um, you need to add the um, app ID and app password here. And then you just click in connect and it will be connected. Um, but in order to it, for it to be connected, you actually need to uh, run your solution here. Or you can publish your bot just regular as you publish in it. It will be automatically connected to Azure, and then you'll have the publishing profile here. So you just click Publish, and it will be published directly to your um, Azure where you can test it. Here we have the test in web chat. Let's test it here. Um, let's try. So that's a non-toxic sentiment. 
that is valid uh, valid response. Um, I think it's really good thing that I love that not count. Uh, let's try something toxic. So this is toxic sentiment. So this rain makes me sick because um, we, we were talking about weather a lot uh, throughout the conference. So I think it's a good example. Um, so um, here, um, let's go back to um, the code. Um, you can see it's really straightforward. It's a just a basic example. I am using AutoML and uh, Model Builder. Uh, you can use um, CLI or you can use API um, to um, auto build your model using your data. And I think I'm ready for questions. Hey, how's it going? So Any questions? Sorry, we're switching stuff over here. I'm going to switch to Q&A. We don't have any questions just yet. Okay. <laughs> so that I, mean, I think everybody was in like an ah. Actually, <laughs> I, I think so, did someone ask here about how difficult is this to use with SQL Server? Is that is that one of the questions there? Uh, Sofo 264. Um, I haven't tried it myself, but I know that uh, Caesar was talking about it during his session. So definitely check it out. I don't think it's too hard. Um, I think the main thing, and I will repeat myself several times because it's really <laughs> important <laughs> to have really clean data. The better your data, the better your model will be. Perfect. That's that's great to know. Well, feel I, free uh, feel free to jump into the, the chat room if there's other questions, and uh, we appreciate the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Veronica. I like all right, all right uh, people on the stream. We're going to be doing the our usual dance. We're going to get Isaac Levin. He's going to be talking about let's see where is it application insights. So more Azure, more diagnostics. So we'll be right back.